All right, what is going on, you good-looking roosters? I genuinely feel like I have to find a better way to start off these videos, but I don't know. Welcome, everyone, to the channel. Today, we've got some more AFL 2024 trade news to talk about. This is like part 69 or something of these. I've made so many, I can't even keep up myself anymore. If, again, if you guys do happen to enjoy this content and you want to see this beautiful, mildly obese face continue to talk to you about AFL trade news and whatnot, don't forget to make sure to leave a like, uh, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you never miss uh, any more videos. But you know what? We've got a couple things to talk about today. First of all, I wanted to uh, get into a, a shorter, smaller rumor that I don't know how much there's going to be into this, but it does say that Finn McGuinness is getting a lot of interest from Essendon. Of course, this is all being reported by uh, Kel Toomey on Gettable. Again, it seems like Essendon are looking for some extra outside pace, and I believe there's some some rumors at Essendon that believe that Finn McGuinness could be one of those guys that they may be being able to play on the wing. And again, you can tell they're looking for some some wing depth and some extra speed on that. They brought in Xavier Dersma last year. He wasn't exactly the answers they wanted. They had Nick Cox and Harry Jones playing on the wing throughout like a lot of the season. And that was definitely like the slowest wing pair you've probably seen. So they're looking to add some speed to this wing department that they've obviously got. It's just funny that they're interested in McGuinness from Hawthorne when they had Massimo D'Ambrosio right there, who they already stole away from Richmond's VFL and picked him one spot before Richmond were able to pick in the mid-season. They already did Richmond dirty and then decided, you know what, we're not really playing this guy after like two years. If he wants to go be traded to Hawthorne, we'll trade him there and, you know, it won't really affect us. And funnily enough, he went to Hawthorne became a near all Australian and has been one of the best wings in the competition. And I'm pretty sure Essendon are currently sitting there like that Mike Wazowski meme. And Richmond are just in the background, kind of laughing, but are also still crying themselves to sleep that they watched this guy go to two teams that's not them. So yeah, will this happen? Apparently not really. It's like a medium chance that Finn McGuinness does get traded. I think a lot of people expect him to stay on Hawthorne. They like the depth that they have at Hawthorne right now, and they don't want to lose anyone. They want to add to this team. They're bringing in Battle, and they're bringing in Barras to go and help this back line. They're going to continue to draft probably steals in like the third and fourth round picks that they've been continuously trying to do, and they're going to be trying to push for a top four. They're not going to want to lose any depth. They're not going to want to trade away any players. I can't see this happening. And I think this is just Essendon really scouting the market for what's available right now on the wing. We also got a new report that does suggest that Collingwood are now by far and wide the favorite to get Harry Perryman. I wouldn't even be surprised if by the time this video comes out, Harry Perryman is nominated Collingwood to go there. I think it is that likely at the moment. It is being reported by Mitch Cleary that Harry Perryman has toured Collingwood HQ, who has moved to the favoritism for the Giants free agent. Port Adelaide had been the long favorite for his services, but the footy boss Chris Davies suggested today they may not be in front of the queue. Hawks are out of the race for Harry Perryman as well. This is all being reported on 7 News Melbourne. Again, I expect this to literally happen. Literally, literally. I expect this to happen now. I don't think uh, Harry Perryman is going to be going to uh, the Port Adelaide Football Club. If he did, it'd be a semi-shock at this point. Again, they did offer him a six-year deal, which had a clause for a seventh year. And they apparently offered him wing time. GWS offered, I think, a similar deal about five years, but offered him like halfback, back pocket role. And Colin would have come out and have said, you want to play inside midfield? We are looking for an inside midfielder. We want to trade for you. And I'm guessing they up their offer from like five years to six years. The thing is as well, Harry Perryman was a massive Collingwood fan growing up. So I wouldn't be surprised if he actually takes a bit of a pay cut to get to the pies and provide something that they really need, which is some you know, midfield depth right now. 
Again, at the time making this video, he hasn't nominated Collingwood, but I highly expect him to have by the time this probably gets published. So if you're wondering why, uh, yeah, this was made a bit before he decided to do that, which again, I'm just looking into the future. I think he's going to nominate the Pies. We've also got a report here that says that contracted giant Xavier O'Halloran is said to be garnering interest from the Western Bulldogs, the club closest to home for the 24-year-old. Again, O'Halloran, if I'm not mistaken, has been the sub a couple of times uh, for the Giants now. I think he has definitely played a lot of different positions, but when we saw him in the final series where he came on as the sub, they actually sent him down forward and he kind of played as like a pressure forward for quite a fair bit. I'm going to be honest here, I'm not exactly too educated or as educated on Xavier O'Halloran as I probably should be. But the thing is, when a player is a sub on one of the best teams in the competition, there is a chance for them to maybe go and play elsewhere and provide something and fill in a role that that team may necessarily need. Do the Dogs need another pressure forward? I'm not exactly too sure, but I've seen O'Halloran play some midfield time. I'm not sure if that's going to be like on the wing at the Dogs or whatever it might be. I don't know where he would go. But the thing is, the Dogs are pretty stacked in the midfield as well. I think they're looking for backmen. So does O'Halloran fit that role? I actually have legitimately no idea. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, as you can tell, I haven't really concentrated too much of the sub of the GWS football club. I apologize, but I probably should, I probably should be doing better. One player I do know about actually does happen to be Ollie Lord from Port Adelaide, with it being said that the power forward prospect is drawing keen rival interest. Port Adelaide key forward Ollie Lord is reportedly drawing interest from a number of Victorian rivals seeking to lure the Sandringham product back home. Collingwood and Melbourne were the two teams mentioned by AFL.com's Josh Gabalich, Gabalich, something, I don't know, uh, I don't know, as having links to Lord and a clear vacancy in their tall forward stocks. Again, this is a weird one for Port Adelaide because it seems like they like Ollie Lord, but the thing is, they haven't been playing him that much and they've been very much favoriting Mitch Georgiades as their number one. They've had Rowan Marshall as like their number two and they've had Charlie Dixon in the most recent year, plays like the number third and then the backup Ruckman. And now he's, of course, retiring. The thing is, some people might be like, could Ollie Lord maybe go and fit that position? But at the end of the day, he's not really that much of a Ruckman. And Port Adelaide may be looking for a guy to play some backup Ruck. And I think Ollie Lord is a legitimate key forward. The thing is, as well, they're bringing in Jack Lacocious. And the way all these reports, have been going about Jack Lukosius now on Port Adelaide. It seems like they want to play him as a key forward. Is that the right move? I don't think so. I think he's more of a halfback in the AFL, but you know, that is what it is. They seem to want him as a key forward. He's not the fill-in Ruckman though that Charlie Dixon is. So how they navigate that, I'm not too sure. But if a team like Collingwood was to come out and be like, we want to give you a end of second round pick or something for Ollie Lord. I can't see how Port Adelaide are going to say no to this because it seems like they are actually kind of taking a bit of a step back and are realizing that maybe they're not necessarily progressing where they need to be. They need to retool and change the list up a little bit. And that's exactly what they're doing. Again, they're moving on from Charlie Dixon. He is, of course, retired. Um, Travis Boak is still at the club at the time of making this video. He hasn't retired yet. I think he will re-sign, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he retired. So you've also got the situation where Dan Houston has requested a trade. Ivan Soldo has requested a trade. Ollie Lord will probably jump onto that right now. And they're definitely looking at free agents to try and go after, but Jack Lukosius seems to be one of the only ones they are fully committed to at the moment. It looks like they might be actually focusing on the draft for this year, or at least trying to bring in some picks. Again, they want two first round picks for Dan Houston. Is that fair enough? Probably. I mean, he's a two-time All-Australian. Ivan Soldo is still worth the second round pick they'll get from St. Kilda. Oli Lord could be worth the second round pick. They're legitimately trying to stack 
through this draft. And does that get used to go to the draft or go for trading? I'm not too sure, but I can't see a reason why they don't try and settle for doing both. So again, there's a ton of more AFL draft news that's been happening recently, which I'm going to play for you guys right now, just so you guys are all up to date and whatnot. Jack Darling, again, we know he has been offered a deal by North Melbourne. I have said this previously. I didn't exactly think this was the smartest move for North Melbourne to be going after him, but it is official now. Jack Darling has requested a trade to North Per the ages, Pete Ryan, it comes after nines. Tom Morris reported on Monday that the Premiership Eagle had undergone a medical at Arden Street. Again, I think, yes, they probably needed a second key forward to put with Nick Larkey. And apparently they're looking to add a bunch more veteran experience in, you know, this trade and draft and all of that type of stuff draft how can you really add veteran experience in the draft what am i talking about unless you get like 28 year old sean manor or something i don't know they're looking to add a bunch more experience in like the trade and whatnot darling for them i guess makes sense because they need a key forward he's a premiership player the issue is i just think he's kind of done like he's kind of washed and i think a lot of the internet agrees i saw a comment of this guy roasting him and saying he'd get torn apart in the vfl and look, yes, I believe there'd be some defender at Frankston or Southport who could probably cook Jack Darling. But at the end of the day, he's probably going to cook 999 out of 1,000 VFL defenders. So we won't go that far. He's still got some juice in the tank. And I think he can provide North a little bit. Again, we've got some more stuff coming out here. Being said that the Gold Coast Suns have reportedly made their interest in Crow's Tall Elliot Himmelberg known with the Queensland club targeting the unrestricted free agent this offseason. I don't think many clubs are going to go after Himmelberg. I think like GWS were interested last year. It didn't get done. I don't know if they'll come hard this year for him. Pause. I don't really know what Himmelberg is in the AFL. I don't really rate him that much as a player. I mean, if he loses, you know, if he goes to a different team and Adelaide loses him, it is what it is. I don't think this is that bad. It's also being said that a favorite for Essendon forward, Jake Stringer, is said to have merged, and it isn't Collingwood, according to SCN's Sam Edmund. Those monitoring Stringer's situation can put a line through a move to the Magpies for the Premiership X Bulldog. Speaking on Tuesday, Edmund stated that Sydney are the most likely landing spot for Stringer, with Collingwood no longer viewed as a club in the race for his signature. Again, we know that Collingwood rumor is not true. I believe Damian Barrett spoke just yesterday or a couple days ago that Collingwood are still interested in him and there are people at the club who want him and people that don't. They will still come and look at him. I think Sydney would be a good decision uh, to have a look at him as well. They have a lot of really good high half forwards who can move into the midfield. And if you can get Jake Stringer fit, he would be so good at that. But if he's going to be unfit and he's not going to try and be lazy like he did at Essendon for a lot of times this year, despite like the 40-goal season, then I don't think Sydney will be too keen on Jake Stringer, but they are definitely an option for him right there. Tom McDonald recently just re-signed with the Melbourne Demons for 12 months. Great move for them. I know he's been in and out of the team over the last couple of years, but this year, 2024, he really established who he was going to be and he was very good down back he was so much better than adam tomlinson that adam tomlinson is looking to leave with may and lever having a lot more injuries now it's good to have some depth there and it's good to have still another veteran role player down there like tom mcdonald who can go and do the role and look i don't really like him up forward that much but if a forward or someone like that was to get injured one game you could always go and move up Tom McDonald and he would be able to do it knowing he's got some experience actually playing up there. So it wouldn't be too far of a stretch for him. Western Bulldogs Premiership player Jack McRae also apparently wants to go to St. Kilda. After requesting a trade last week, McRae is keen to go on the Saints. He has three years left on his contract with the Dogs. Apparently from what I've heard, the Dogs are being like quite petty on this and are like legitimately saying to him you are three year contracted if we want to keep you we're going to keep you and i think that's stiff he didn't play in their team they like emergency him or not emergency but 23rd manned him for the final and had james harms come straight into that team 
I think they've got so much midfield depth on the dogs with it consistently coming through that they don't need any more depth there. So if they could get like a second round pick in for Jack McRae to St. Kilda, that'd be good for them. I don't necessarily know how much I like McRae as a player anymore, but the reality is St. Kilda desperately need midfielders. So it kind of works well for both parties. And yeah, I think this makes sense for them. An end of second round pick, early third round pick. He's like 31 years old now. Has regressed a little bit as a player. But again, with Brad Crouch, apparently, rumor says, reportedly going to be retiring with St. Kilda from knee injuries and issues. You desperately have to bring in midfield depth to keep helping this team. And that's what I think they're going to do. I think they're going to draft two midfielders, most likely, with the top 20 picks they're going to have their own and battle uh, for the battle compensation. You get midfielders there and you get in a midfielder in Jack McRae. Three midfielders straight away probably come into their 23 next season. Things could start looking much better for St. Kilda and they finally get to develop that midfield out a lot more. One that I actually really wanted to talk about, like my, I've been itching a lot to talk about this uh, for, for a week and I'm, I haven't been itching on my leg or I guess you could say it was, it's like the two ball things around my leg. I've been itching there quite a fair bit. This was actually reported on Gettable, I believe. And Callum Toomey was actually saying that Dan Houston has met with Carlton, uh, St. Kilda, Western Bulldogs, and Collingwood. And he can rule out St. Kilda as being the team who is in, you know, as is not lo no longer interested in Dan Houston. You might be thinking, didn't he recommit to you know, Port Adelaide a little bit ago. Yes, he kind of did, but in saying that, apparently that was all full of crap. He only did that so that Port don't lose their focus in finals. And he just, again, didn't want to stir the pot, which I guess that's a nice thing for him to do. But he, he lied. He wants to get back to Victoria. That has been confirmed by a bunch of people. But where I'm going with this is he met with all those teams because he wants to play finals and he wants to get a much bigger contract than what he's on now. And he wants to play in Victoria. The thing is that they reported on Gettable by Callum, to uh, Cal Callum, Callum, Callum Toomey is what I'm trying to say, is that he believes even though Houston has not met with North Melbourne, he thinks North Melbourne are a massive, serious chance to go after Dan Houston as they believe they have a really good young core right now and they're willing to throw away potentially their future first or Maybe their pick even this year if they're going to put it in negotiations with Port Adelaide. And I actually think this is a really smart move by both parties. Again, North have an exceptional young core right now. They have a hundred young midfielders with players like Colby McKercher not even being able to like get into that midfield and having to play down back. I don't necessarily know if they need another midfielder and the thing is with North Melbourne I think is if they were to maybe trade away this pick to try and get Dan Houston yes Houston might not be worth pick two but in saying that you could maybe get something else back in return and necessarily it's a good situation for North because they don't need another midfielder and it's just all midfielders like in the top 10 but I think pick two is too expensive for him I think if North were interested in maybe going down this direction that I think they should is potentially at pick two, they could very well go and get a Harvey Langford who even though he's a tall midfielder can easily play as a high half forward, a really good marking option up there. And he has been able to do that very well. They could go out and get him and play him 50% forward, 50% midfield, and then trade next year's future first round pick to go and get Dan Houston to the team. Again, assuming they get Houston, a Harvey Langford, a Jack Darling, and maybe another player or two, which we know they're interested in, you get Griffin Logue and that, and a couple other those players or whatnot, back from injury, you got Combin down back now. That North team actually sounds a lot better than second last that they have been this season. I wouldn't be surprised if that North team actually finished like 13th or something like that and very much trended upwards and would be a top eight team in like two years. The thing is, Port Adelaide would benefit from this. They'd get like pick five or pick six for Dan Houston. I think that's a fair trade. He's a two-time All-Australian in a row. 
But Dan Houston gets to go back to Melbourne. He gets to go to the team that I think can offer him by far the most amount of money. And I think if North Melbourne, you know, gained him, Harvey Langford, and continue to develop this young core, there is no reason they wouldn't make the eight in like a year or two after 2025. We got to remember before 2024, North Melbourne had by far like the worst backline I think I've nearly ever seen in my days of watching footy. All of a sudden they added Charlie Common down there who has been really good for them. Griffin Logue is going to come back from injury. You have a chance to get Dan Houston, a two-time All-Australian halfback, arguably the best halfback in the game. And I think if they really wanted to, if they wanted to maybe move some picks, try and trade up in this year's draft, they could very well go after a Luke Trainer, who is the best key defender in this draft, who was dropped all the way from ranking like number nine to number 17. Again, if he is available at like 14 and North trade up their second round pick this year and maybe next year to try and move up and get him, that would be such a W by North Melbourne. You would practically fully fit all of this out. And even though this kind of sounds NBA 2K-ish and pretty like fantasy-like, I actually really disagree because I think if Dan Houston was thinking right, North Melbourne should 100% be an option for him because if you try and go to Collingwood, Carlton, or Western Bulldogs, two of those teams don't even have their first round pick this year, and their picks are not going to be high at any means. It is going to be complicated to get there. Those three teams are struggling cap space-wise, and even though they're making finals, that should not be the main ploy to go to a team. You have to look at the future and know what is going to be the best available spot for you in a couple of years, if that is the matter. It's not like he's that old. If North Melbourne came to you and offered a couple hundred thousand per year extra than all those teams, which they will, they can offer up their future first, which will be like six. Port Adelaide would love that. Easy trade condition terms. And you know they're going to make the finals in like two years. Why? Why is this a bad decision? Why is this not being talked about more? I think this makes sense. And North desperately need a half back. I think so bad, especially now that Sheaves was a full-time midfielder and, McCur you know, McKercher will definitely be playing a bit more down, you know, in the midfield now. And we know Zach Fisher is no good as a player. It makes sense for North Melbourne to do this deal, I think. I think they should go full steam ahead. And I'd be pretty, pretty upset if I was a North fan and they didn't go and try and do this. We've actually got a fair bit of poor Adelaide news to talk about to start off with. And I wanted to talk about the interesting one that came out, uh, which I actually talked about on the channel like literally a month ago. So I was pretty spot on about this, but it is being said that Ivan Soldo has officially requested a trade back to Victoria and is hoping to sign with St. Kilda. And that is being reported by Callum Toomey. Again, this is amazing for the St. Kilda Football Club not so good for Port Adelaide. And the reason I say this is because we know Port Adelaide gave up a decent amount to get him a second round pick and a fourth round pick, which has ended up being okay. And they gave that up to get him in, thinking he would be their number one Ruckman, but with a ton of injuries and just issues this season, it just didn't end up happening. But he obviously didn't have much of an off season with Port Adelaide. And I think if you were to give him an off season and you know, hopefully let him stay injury free, he could very well take over being, you know, Port Adelaide's number one Ruckman next season. And I think a healthy Ivan Soldo could very well be better than Jordan Sweet. And even if he's not, again, Ruckman do get injured and having Ivan Soldo as your backup Ruckman in case Jordan Sweet were to go down is an absolutely insane thing that you can have on your team. But unfortunately, he wants to go to St. Kilda and I think the St. Kilda Football Club will offer up a deal that Port Adelaide will just be like, Yep, let's make this happen. And then if you're wondering, why would St. Kilda do this? Do they not own, already have, you know, Rowan Marshall? Is he not one of the best Ruckman in the comp? Why would they go out and bring in Ivan Soldo? Again, one of the biggest positives about Ivan Soldo does actually happen to be his ability to play in a side with another Ruckman. We saw him actually win a premiership in 2019 with Toby Nankervis, who was struggling a lot through injuries that year, and again, played throughout with the Tigers with, of course, those 
Ruckman that can go forward like Marbia Chol and all of that type of stuff. And now we know Chol has really invented himself as a full forward at Hawthorne. The thing is though, with Port Adelaide, Jordan Sweet really didn't have the ability to go forward. So he and Soldo just didn't really work that great. But if we're looking at St. Kilda and how that's going to go, we know when Rowan Marshall goes down full forward, he's actually really, really good at what he does up there. And there's been AFL experts for a long time who've actually questioned if Rowan Marshall is a better forward than he is Ruckman. And that's saying something considering this guy is a top five Ruckman in the AFL. He has the ability to be, I think, a two goal per game type of key forward who goes and plays in the ruck for like 30 to 40 percent i think that's what st kilda are really looking at here again it's been proven for a couple years now max king does need some help he does need a second key forward option down there they've rotated a bunch of different guys through and nothing has really stuck for them so far they've even tried to play tom campbell and Roel marshall at the same time but obviously tom campbell i just don't know if that guy was AFL caliber of, of, of a level, if you know what I mean. But if you bring in Ivan Soldo and you say to him, look, we want you to play 70% of your game as the Ruckman, 30% as a forward. And then you do the same thing. You go to Royal Marshall and say, look, we now want you to play as like 70% up forward, 30% as a Ruck. I think that would actually be a really good dynamic. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rowan Marshall goes from one of the best Ruckman in the, in the game to a key forward who will average you like 15 hitouts per game as the second Ruckman, but could also kick you to a game as well. I really like this. I think this experiment could go well by St. Kilda and there's no reason they shouldn't do it. And I think that's why they're really interested in Ivan Soldo. Dan Houston has also finally requested a trade to a Victorian club. We've been knowing this for a minute that he's been wanting to go back to Victoria. The reported clubs that are interested in him do happen to be the Western Bulldogs, Collingwood Football Club, and Carlton. I also think North Melbourne are an outside chance as well. And again, it was said St. Kilda, but they have apparently dropped out of the race. So I don't think they're going to be going for Dan Schuston anymore. Again, Jack Lacocious actually decided to pick Port Adelaide over Adelaide, where the bank said that he wants to join Port Adelaide in the upcoming trade period, according to Tom Morris and Callum Toomey. He has two years remaining on his deal with the Suns, which is being said to be worth over a million a season. Now, again, this is good for Port Adelaide if you look at it in one way, bad for Port Adelaide if you look at it in another way. Unfortunately, I think the reason Port Adelaide really want Jack Lacocious is they want to play him as a key forward. And I just think that is a terrible idea. Anyone who has watched Jack Lacocious play for Gold Coast over the last couple of years as a key forward knows that he can be an extremely weak forward who is unwilling to take a contested mark and just do, does not look good up to, to the point where when he was playing there and he had a bad game or two, Damien Hardwick dropped him to the VFL. When Jack Lacocious plays his best footy, I think he's a halfback who has some intercepting about his game. He's also a very good player when it does come to doing the kickouts. I mean, he's one, I think, the better at it. His foot skills down there are elite. And I just think in the AFL, he is a backman. Thing is, without Port Adelaide are looking at it, though, is... From what we've heard is they want to play him as a key forward, which I just don't think is the right decision. And it looks like they're going to be moving Burgoyne down to being a halfback to replace Dan Schuston, which I love. I mean, Dan Schuston is one of the best halfbacks in the game. And you replace him with Jason Burgoyne, who was a good wing that it looked to be one of the best halfbacks in that final series when he got pushed down there. So that makes sense. But Lacocious, yeah, he's not a full forward. Uh, he, I don't know if he will change and become a full forward at Port Adelaide, but to me, he's weak. He doesn't go for a marking contest. He gets outbeaten extremely easy, even as like the second or third option that he was at Gold Coast. He's going to be like a distinctive second option at Port Adelaide. And it's, uh, I just don't like it. I don't agree with it. And I think if they bring him in, they should be looking to play him as a backman. Caleb Daniel reportedly weighing up his Bulldogs future with interest coming from North Mel- <laughs> You know what season it is, boys and girls? <laughs> it's not just 
AFL trade season. It's freaking hay fever season, man. My nose always looks pink while I make these videos like I'm a drunk. But Caleb Daniel is getting interest from North Melbourne, which... Yeah, look, I'm going to be honest here. I don't know how much I really rate Caleb Daniel anymore. I think that this is good for the dogs if he wants to leave because you can get like a pick 50 or something back in return for him. It's same thing with McRae. These guys genuinely aren't in the dogs best 22 right now and maybe they do serve purposes on other teams McRae could probably get a second round pick from the saints which we know it's who he's requested a trade to and north melbourne would probably give you a third round pick for caleb daniel so if you can make both of these trades happen it gives you more capital to go into with the draft and continue to go younger which beverage has been like almost trying to push for the last couple of years which is interesting but at the end of the day, this is a good move by the Dogs. I don't know how much Caleb Daniel helps out North Melbourne, but it seems like they're really trying to bring in these veterans for a year or two to come and play with these younger guys, set some standards and make the training, I think, a little bit more intense, which will ultimately improve their team in uh, the long term. Again, they're interested in Jack Darling. I think they've offered him a deal and he's requested a trade there. So adding, I guess, Caleb Daniel to this list, maybe it does make sense. Maybe if they want to bring in a veteran or two who is being proven to be able to help the team he's been on, it could be a good decision. But at the end of the day, does Caleb Daniel play that much at the North Melbourne Football Club? I'm not too sure. He definitely can't get a game right now at the Dogs, even though he did play in their final, I think. He shouldn't probably be getting games for them next year. Maybe on North Melbourne, but... Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. They do need a half back, I suppose. Again, we know that Sheez was playing more up the ground now in the midfield, especially. McKercher wants to play double the midfield next season. And Zach Fisher is just kind of a poo player. So <laughs> maybe they do need him. I don't know. I think, yeah, this deal could very well get done. Another interesting one by Cal Toomey does suggest that Melbourne has eyes on delisted Saint Tom Campbell as a ruck free agent. They actually want to bring him in, make him a four-year player, a four-club player, sorry. Uh, Melbourne has interest in him to be the backup to Ruckman Max Gorn. Again, I guess this is an okay one. This just reminds me of like a, a Sam Naismith signing, if you guys know what I mean. Like, Richmond just needed a backup Ruckman, so they went with like the veteran route, and he ended up playing like four games for the Tigers. And I guess he... I guess he did his thing. He was a good clubman for them. He retired with them only after one year, but he was he was there. I guess Tom Campbell, you bring him in with Melbourne, maybe he'll be like a second or third string ruckman. They might even go out and draft another ruck. They literally did so a couple of years with Luke Jackson before he decided to, again, just, he didn't want to be there anymore is what I'm, is what I'm, what I'm trying to say here. He basically left exactly like my dad. But at least they like got something or return. My dad like didn't give me anything. What what happened, dad? I'm still waiting for my milk that you promised me. Yeah, this is a weird one. I don't know. I don't think Tom Campbell is really AFL level anymore. But if the D's want to hold off from drafting a Ruckman for another year and Max Gorn were to unfortunately get injured, which again, touch wood, that wouldn't of course happen, then yes, I can see a situation where maybe they go and just be like, look, we want you to be uh, one of the last men we add to our roster. We'll bring you in. You can be on like whatever the AFL's version of the veteran minimum is, and you can come in be our second or third string ruckman. And I guess Tom Campbell would accept that. I mean, he'd be on his fourth club, which is pretty insane to think. But yeah, I guess it's not the worst situation. Not really too much of a trade like confirmation rumor here, but more of like, a suggestion and rumor that I'm thinking of starting because I, I remember hearing about it. But there is a report here that does say that Ga uh, Gary Rowan is one of seven cats who have been delisted. And everyone's been talking about Gary Rowan being delisted on Geelong. But no one's talked about how Brandon Parfit is amongst this list of players who have been delisted from Geelong. A guy who has played well over 100 games for Geelong since 2017 for them another guy who is literally a premiership player for them in 2022 and other than this year has been in the best 22 of one of the best teams in the comp like his whole career it's really weird to me to think that this guy legitimately 
just got delisted. And I'm sitting back here and I'm thinking, there is no way that Brandon Parfit will not be on an AFL team next season. I think there will be about like five clubs who will legitimately go after him. And the reality is, is this is a man who has averaged like 18 to 20 disposals per game in a couple seasons and has been known to be able to hit the scoreboard as a midfielder. Some people will be like, why? Why did he get delisted? Why did Geelong do it? The end of the day is he wasn't fitting into Geelong's midfield, which was already an average midfield. So they needed to look past him. And I think that's good, right? It makes sense. But the reality is, is he would be able to get a game on a bad team and he would be a good depth player for any contending team or a team looking to contend that would be looking for another player to take a fly on. I think Brandon Parfit, there's a couple clubs I'm thinking of. First of all, Richmond, right? Richmond have one of the worst midfields, if not the worst midfield in the game. They've got Tim Torano and Jacob Hopper in there, but one of them is always injured, and they've got Dion Prestia in there, who is always injured as well. We know they're going to be hitting the draft pretty big and going after players, you know, like Jagger Smith, it looks like, Finno Sullivan, potentially, Harvey Langford. End of the day, they'll probably be bringing in like three to five midfielders in this draft class. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Tigers go up to Brandon Parfit and be like, look, we like what we see from you. We think maybe having you be a wingman for us, which we kind of need, play some midfield as well, but maybe even play as like a, a small forward for the Tigers as well. I wouldn't be surprised if they said to him, look, we'll give you like a two-year deal and we can make this happen. There will 100% be a ton of other teams out there who will be interested in potentially trying to sign Brandon Parfit. But I think Richmond will be one of those teams that will look at him as a guy who can not only play inside mid, maybe chuck him on the wing and maybe even have him up forward, which I think the Tigers are kind of really lacking at literally every position. Again, and speaking of players of Richmond being interested in, it is being reported by Cameron Hicks, who I believe is a Tigers insider, that said that Richmond are one of the clubs James Peatling has met with. A little bit after he said that, it actually came out and did say that by Tom Morris, that GWS had been confident this time last week that James Peatling would sign a fresh three-year deal with the team. He still may, but he spent Sunday and yesterday in Melbourne meeting with Victorian-based clubs. Again, this is super interesting that the Tigers are finally actually linked to someone. You've got everyone and their dad trying to leave the team and no one wanted to come to the Tigers. Again, I don't know how much I'm going to look into this because at the end of the day, James Peatling is from Greater Western Sydney and they've only offered him a three-year deal. But I think with Harry Perryman and Isaac Cumming most likely leaving, them probably doing a couple of adjusting. I think if a Victorian club is going to come and offer him four years, I wouldn't be surprised if GWS even looked to try and match this deal. But the reality is, is that a team like the Tigers could very well use him. Now, it's hard to say what type of position James Peatling is in the AFL. It's because he's practically played all of them. Again, he spent a lot of time with the Giants as a sub. Then I think they played him a bit in the midfield and like on the wing. I think he spent time as like a high half forward. And then the final series, they had him as like another tagger who was helping Toby Bedford run with a couple players. And he was even able to go and hit the scoreboard with one of his games being a goal game and 15 disposals and another being a 10 disposal game with two goals. This is a guy who was getting better and better every week who went from one of the Giants sub to one of their more prominent midfielders by the end of the season. I don't necessarily know if they're going to let him go, but I think if the Tigers were looking at him, this is still another interesting decision by them because they might be looking at it where they're thinking, we're like the only team in the AFL right now who doesn't have a tagger. We could bring in Peatling. He could play a bit of high half forward, a bit of wing for us. But ultimately, when we need to go and tag a player, he can go and start in that inside midfield with Torano, maybe whoever we take at pick one. Hopper might be in there. Prestia might be in there. Whoever we take with our other picks might be floating in there. We're going to have a lot of players who are going to be going into this inside midfield. And if they want to add another option in a guy like James Peatling, it could maybe be a decision that we go and look at. Again, I still get Vietnam flashbacks as a Tigers fan, knowing we offered, I guess, Tim Torano seven years, which is fine. But Jacob Hopper getting 
a seven-year contract to be kind of a dud right now for the Tigers still hurts my feelings and makes me want to jump off the biggest bridge in Melbourne. It literally does. Like, why did you do this to me, Jacob Hopper? But the reality is midfield for the Tigers is not their strong suit. As mentioned, they have pretty much, I think, easily the worst midfield in the game. Every Richmond fan will tell you they have the worst midfield in the game. Other than Torano and Hopper, they really only have Prestia, who gets injured every week, right? They had Marlon Pickett in there, who's retired. They had Shea Bolton in there, who is no longer going to be on the team anymore. Not to mention one of Taranto or Hopper is always injured. Jack Ross was injured after the year. Jack Graham, who is probably going to be leaving. I don't even know what's going on with him anymore. Um, we'll talk about that in, other, in another vid. The Tigers are going to be looking for some depth, right? The pick one... They're going to be taking a midfielder with their other first round picks they're going to be getting for these players. A bunch of midfielders are going to be getting taken. If... Ew, 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 I've forgotten the guy's name who I'm talking about for some reason. Am I all there in the head? I don't know. If James Peatling wants to be a consistent full-time inside midfielder on a lot of money on four years, Richmond have the salary cap and the ability to go and do that. But if he wants to play on a contending team where he might get shuffled around here and there and be reduced as like a tagger for the most part, he's going to re-sign with GWS. But again, the thing is, he's from Greater Western Sydney, if I remember right. This is a smart decision by him if he wants to re-sign. A smart decision if he wants to maybe go to the Tigers. But also an interesting thing to theorize, who are these other Melbourne teams that are interested in James Peatling? right? And another team I feel like he will have met with does happen to be St. Kilda. They are desperately trying to improve their midfield. We know that Jack McRae has requested a trade there. We know they launched this massive bid to go for Zach Merritt, which I don't think has really gone too far at all. And we know they will probably be looking at drafting a midfielder with their top pick. I wonder if they're arguing to Peatling right now and saying, we think we can make the eight. We just desperately need a midfield. You come to us, we'll give you a four-year deal, confirm midfield time, and you can play with Jack Steele, Jack McRae, and whoever we draft, and we can actually try and build something good inside there. But of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment your thoughts and opinions on all of this down below. Do you guys like all this latest AFL trade news and whatnot, the updates, all of the above? Subscribe to my gaming channel and my RL slash flowing channels. Comment your thoughts and opinions. Subscribe to this channel. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.